हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वील बी डिस्कसिंग दी एम सी क्यूज ऑन दी रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम थ्री ईयर ओल्ड बॉय हैज हिस्ट्री ऑफ रिकरेंट वीजिंग एसोसिएटेड विद दी अपर रेस्पिरेटरी ट्रैक्ट इन्फेक्शन विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग फीचर्स मोस्ट सपोर्ट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अस्थमा नाउ वेन एवर यू गेट सच अ क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू बेसिकली लुक दैट वट आर द पॉइंट्स इन फेवर ऑफ दी अस्थमा when i have solved the multiple mcqs what i have picked up the points is if there is presence of nocturnal cough that is one of the point in favor of the asthma there is presence of the nocturnal cough then the second thing is there is the word written recurrent wheezing recurrent wheezing right if there is written something which is the recurrent wheezing that is again one of the point in favor of this right then the third thing which can be seen is there is history of allergic disorders for example allergic rhinitis or something like this is being given so there is history of allergic disorders and fourth very very important is presence of interval symptoms presence of interval symptoms now what is the meaning of the word interval symptoms child is having the cough and cold child sorry child is having the uh, wheezing even without cough and cold that is the meaning of interval symptoms that wheeze is not only present with cough and cold but there is presence of wheeze even without cough and cold so if there is presence of wheeze even without cough and cold that supports the diagnosis of asthma right now if you look in this question your first most of the thing will be saying that peak flow variability why to go for anything else but remember spirometry can be done in a child at the age of 6 years so it is one of a tricky question so therefore this rules out the peak flow variability daytime cough no it should be nocturnal cough finger clubbing can be seen in anything so the right answer here is presence of symptoms between cough and cold that is the interval symptoms and that is the point you have to pick up that supports the diagnosis of asthma second 8 year old female was admitted for an exacerbation of asthma on history she was, she was having symptoms daily and awakened several times each week with wheezing spirometry done shows fev1 at 60% predicted for age at discharge most appropriate medication to be prescribed is so here we are given is daytime symptoms present daily night time symptoms present every week and fev1 is 60% these three things are being given right so if you consider the asthma classification one is the intermittent asthma one is the mild persistent asthma mild persistent asthma then is the moderate persistent asthma and then is the severe persistent asthma severe persistent asthma right so if you see here here fev1 is more than 80% here it is more than or equal to 80% here it is 60 to 80% and severe persistent is less than 60% so if i only take the criteria that is fev1 at 60% we are talking of the moderate persistent we are talking of the moderate persistent now in the intermittent the treatment is short acting beta agonist in the mild persistent is you say low dose inhaled corticosteroids or or you can give is the leukotriene modifiers leukotriene modifiers mast cell stabilizers are no longer indicated in the childhood asthma according to the latest edition of nelson they are no longer indicated in moderate persistent either you can give is the medium dose inhaled corticosteroid or low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta agonist and as you all know long acting beta agonist are never given alone they are always given in combination with the inhaled corticosteroids in severe persistent you start with the medium dose ics medium dose ics there is no response so therefore it is the medium dose ics plus long acting beta agonist is still no response you change it to the high dose ics no response you go on to the oral steroids 
so this is in the nutshell revision of what the treatment is being given so if you look here we are told a question and this question says it should be a moderate persistent it should be a moderate persistent asthma and in moderate persistent long acting they are never given alone short acting is indicated in intermittent asthma monty leucast is again indicated in the mild persistent asthma so it should be inhaled corticosteroid which are given twice daily inhaled corticosteroid twice daily that is the most appropriate answer from the choices being given going on to the question number 3 10 month old child has reported in opd with low grade fever cough and nasal congestion for one week therefore prodermal phase is present already there is some prodermal phase present according to the parents cough sounded barky on examination there is barky cough child is well hydrated no acute respiratory distress on auscultation clinical finding expected to be present is now just in the mind you start thinking barking cough is there that is one thing which you can get is right and second no hoarseness of voice mentioned but it is most likely in favor of the croup or it is the acute laryngotracheal bronchitis acute laryngotracheal bronchitis now why i am saying it is this croup or acute laryngotracheal bronchitis because if i consider acute epiglottitis there is a sudden onset this all prodermal phase is not present so therefore it is most likely this case right now decreased breath sounds over the right lung field that means it is a case of lobar pneumonia that is the finding no so this rules out prominent expiratory sound caused by bronchospasm and inflation of the small airways that means you are talking of maybe bronchiolitis maybe bronchiolitis but this is not a picture of bronchiolitis barking cough cannot be explained by right prominent inspiratory sound caused by subglotting airway narrowing yes this could be the possibility this could be the possibility that there is the subglotting narrowing which is causing the inspiratory strider which is causing the inspiratory strider which is causing the barking cough why not the fourth choice prominent inspiratory and expiratory sound caused by mucus deposition in both large and small airways that is you are talking of bronchitis this is not at all a picture of the bronchitis right so please consider the right answer here is the prominent inspiratory sound caused by the subglottic airway narrowing so this is the question number 3 and the answer is the choice c question number 4 10 year old boy has history of recurrent chest infection with productive cough he has normal temperature pink skin and mucus membrane and normal heart sound on auscultation bilateral basal crafts are present sweat test is negative clubbing is present it is most likely a case of you have got this picture in this always you should follow the method of exclusion now first we are saying is normal temperature that rules out infective endocarditis now if you see infective endocarditis fever should always be present so if there is normal temperature it rules out then you are saying pink skin and mucus membranes normal heart sound this basically rules out the tetralogy of fellow so this is not also tetralogy of fellow sweat test is negative this rules out cystic fibrosis plus in cystic fibrosis bronchic tesis mainly affects the upper lobe of the lung upper lobe of the lung and here it is being given is the there is bilateral basal crafts there is the bilateral basal crafts right so out of the choices given most likely it is a case of primary ciliary dyskinesia so even if you don't know the questions please try to exclude because you are expecting a clinical paper and the more you will exclude the answer you will come to me you don't agree with this this might be the picture or not but still you will get the answer so we are going to the next question 9 month old boy presented with fever and difficulty in breathing for last 3 days 
इट इज अक्यूट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन एग्जामिनेशन देर इज सब कॉस्टल एंड इंटरकॉस्टल रिसेशन एंड वीज इज प्रेजेंट थ्रू आउट द लंग फील्ड ऑन चेस्ट एक्सरे देर इज हाइपर इन्फ्लेटेड चेस्ट सो इफ यू गो इन टू द पिक्चर वट इज बींग गिवन इज अ शॉर्ट हिस्ट्री ऑफ द डिजीज वन थिंग देर इज प्रेजेंस ऑफ वीज एंड देर इज हाइपर इन्फ्लेटेड चेस्ट देर इज हाइपर इन्फ्लेटेड चेस्ट विच मोस्ट लाइकली मेक्स अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ वॉट ब्रॉन्क्योलाइटिस विच मोस्ट लाइकली मेक्स अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ ब्रॉन्क्योलाइटिस एंड इन द ब्रॉन्क्योलाइटिस द आइडियल ट्रीटमेंट इज द ह्यूमिडिफाइड ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी ह्यूमिडिफाइड ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी देर इज नो एंटीबायोटिक्स वी गिव देर इज नो स्टीरोड्स वी गिव नो एंटीबायोटिक्स नो स्टीरोड्स this is no this is not indicated and ribavirin is only indicated if there is bronchiolitis along with immunodeficiency or there is congenital heart disease with increased pulmonary blood flow or there is chronic lung disease and the most common chronic lung disease in children is bronchopulmonary dysplasia bronco pulmonary dysplasia so if none of the risk factor is being given then your answer should be only humidified oxygen therapy your answer should be only humidified oxygen therapy clear so this was the discussion of some of the mcqs on the respiratory system thanks